Ike. Seeing a lot of you guys today, I feel like <laughs> lots of Judy, lots of Mike, lots of Jason. Change your name there, Jason. You don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to be me. Here comes another me. Says you. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I'm going right, to change I'm, my name. <laughs> I I have a really funny joke, but it's totally inappropriate. <laughs> so just remind me next time we talk one-on-one -on -one to tell you the really inappropriate joke. Ah, oh, you're going to do that? Yeah. Because now I'm thinking about saying it and i'm like oh, i can't i can't that's how inappropriate it is okay yeah it might even be a sajad joke so i'm just gonna keep oh. it never mind uh, uh. never mind <laughs> la 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 yeah la 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 I, I couldn't spell taylor king so i just stopped at suzanne okay perfect <laughs> perfect you're all gonna be suzanne tonight i love it all right, well, let's get started. Um, I don't know if how many people are coming tonight. I don't have a speaker tonight because I'm the speaker. Um, we're going to have a little conversation about creating what you want in your coaching practice. And what does that mean for you? Uh, obviously, you all know I've made some changes in my coaching practice and there's going to be more changes, you know, more advancements coming. And I, I felt... I wanted to share the thought process behind creating what you want and what that looks like. Um, you know, offers that are aligned with who you are, um, whether it's your past history, your past work history, your morals, your values, and, and really what you want to be doing rather than what people are asking you to do or what you think the market will pay for. And what does that look like for you? So I'm going to start off with this question. Um, who are you being in your business? And what does that look like? So are you being in alignment with your morals, your values, what's fun for you, what's challenging for you? or are you playing it safe? Are you playing it easy? And what's the true answer for that? Anybody want to share? Hey, David. Helen, what's up? Hello. Good to see you. I can certainly share that I'm not being enough mm. in my business. Not to anyone else's expectations, but just to my own, to that full... I mean, we're never there, there, but just in that standing in that space of what I'm, I know even right now today I'm capable of and not standing in that fully. Mm -hmm. So is it, is it a matter of, you know, what you're capable of here, you're operating here and there's a gap between those sure. two places. Okay. Do you know what's sitting in the gap? Just action. I okay. mean, yeah, that's Fair it. Enough. Fair enough. Anyone else? Go ahead, David. I like that word alignment. And I think uh, in the last few days, I I love coaching, but I love speaking a lot more. <clears throat> and I get tremendous feedback from people. You changed my life. And, and I don't mean to poo-poo that. It's very powerful. But um I thought I need to put more of an effort. I was on a call yesterday and the and then a dinner last night. In each case, what's the big thing you're going to focus on 2024? That's an easy question because it's the start of a new year. And I said more marketing efforts. And so I made a big marketing push the last two or three days. And as a result, had three or four conversations, actually five, not four uh, people. Well, we, we want to get you back again. We heard great things, all the response we got and so forth. So I got my pad of paper and I'm I'm writing everything. How many people are you expecting? What's the theme of the conference? When's it going to be? And you want 60 or 90 minutes? And and what do you think that most that would be most beneficial? What would be a home run? And the only reason I'm bringing this up is because on each one of those five conversations, after I was done, I use a 110 in my gratitude journal. I'm just a solid 10 because I'm so excited because that's what I love doing more than anything else. And I like coaching people, 
but a lot of people, well, I didn't get the homework done. Well, I'm not ready. You know, there's just all these different aspects of coaching. Are they on the same? That's why I like alignment. But with the speaking, nothing aligns me more. And when I walk off those stages, I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. So it, I've just decided to align myself more with really going after the speaking and then doing the coaching is sort of an adjunct side side business, if you will. But I just think that's a great word for 24. It's an alignment. Mm. Yeah, I picked a word. I mean, if that's your word for 2024, um, when you when you picked it, did you really realize that it was going to mean focusing back in on getting the speaking gigs or what did it look like for you? Uh, it's I'm I'm very big on one of these modules that I teach is find yourself, find your talent, find your passion, find your purpose. I met with all these guys last night that are all sort of semi-retired, even though I'm the oldest of all of them. They were all in their 60s and I'm in my 70s. And I was like, they're all like bored. And what am I going to do? And so to me, it's all about purpose. So the alignment to me is what makes you the happiest. And I've decided, even though I talk about gratitude and are you grateful for this? And do you have a gratitude journal? If not, you can get one of mine and so on. But I almost think the better question is, are you happy? And there's a lot of people that aren't happy. And if you're happy, that's fantastic. Tell me why. Tell me what you're doing so we can spread it around. But if you're not, what are you doing about it? And so it makes me happy. And so that's why I think I just decided a lot more, more of my energy is going to go to getting speaking gigs. And I get coaching clients from them. But I just there's certain things about coaching and we're all coaches that to me are just kind of frustrating sometimes because you can't want it more for them than they want it for themselves. And so you're trying to set the best example and do all these things. And so you didn't get the homework done. Yeah, see, I had a bad, my toe got hurt and I twisted my little finger. Okay, what else, so what is it this week? But I don't I don't have to worry about that with speaking. Other than occasionally there's somebody who's not paying attention, like a talk two weeks ago and I said, are you on your cell phone? He goes, no, I'm taking notes. And I went, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, my bad. <laughs> but but there's just something about the response. So. Uh, that's why I keep coming back to the, I hadn't thought about it until you said it, Suzanne, but just being in alignment about what makes you happy, you know, and, and, and generally you're going to make more money and other good things are going to happen. But if you focus on what really makes you happy, I think a lot of good things happen. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Um, how many of you have belief statements about your business? Judy does. Judy, you want to share one or two? I know I'm muted. Hold on. Let me find yeah. it. I keep putting it in different places and then I can't find it when I want it. Um, why don't you come back to me? Okay. Um, so when I recommend creating belief statements about your coaching practice, it's, it's really, that's, that's what kind of brought me back to center, um, brought me back into alignment. I believe coaching is custom and co-created in conversation with my clients. I believe that coaching is actual relationship where you're both showing up equally with information, insights, accountability. You know, somebody's name is on my calendar. I'm showing up for that person. It's, it keeps me accountable. That person has an appointment with me, right? And those belief statements can ground you in those moments of shiny object syndrome or somebody wanting you to say yes to doing something that's not in those belief statements. So I'm going to be expanding on mine a little bit because of this transition. And I encourage you to do the same. Three to six belief statements about what you truly stand for or against. Mm -hmm. I Standing against cookie cutter coaching programs, standing against having clients sign up for a coaching program and then never getting to talk to me. That's called scaling a coaching practice. I don't want any parts of it. Judy, did you find your document? 
Well, it wasn't where it was supposed to be. I'm <laughs> trying to track it down. Okay. I Tom, you have your hand up. Yeah, I'm going to read you mine. Awesome. Go ahead. A little bit different than uh, you may, um, may be expecting. Uh, mine reads, and I wrote this, through vision, focus, and movement, I inspire myself and others to recognize and live up to our, our fullest capabilities as God designed each of us so that we experience the fullness and freedom we are meant to have. Wow. That's dated January 4th, 2011. Wow. Do you feel like you're in alignment with that on a daily basis? Every single day. Awesome. Every day. Awesome. As I say, when you, when, when you find alignment, and I, I've taught this globally, when you find alignment with how you are designed, mm -hmm. and we each have a unique blueprint, you put a, a smile on the face of the designer. And there isn't anything anyone could want more than that. Tom, did you say fullness and freedom? Two words? Yes. I love that combination. Thank you. Wow. Kind of speechless there, Tom. Uh, say that again, please. I'm speechless. Oh, well, no, it's mine. Everyone's got theirs. So, yeah, but it's, it's amazing. And I see it in you. What you want for other people. Well, thank you. That's what I live for. Beautiful. Any other inputs there on Tom's or your own belief statements? I found it. She found it. It's it's actually more of a manifesto about what the business foundation is. Hmm. So um, it, it's that I believe the stress in your life is caused by your perception of the situation you're reacting to. You can change your experience in life by changing your subconscious beliefs. You should be free to make choices based on what you really want, not what you're trying to avoid. Making changes doesn't have to be hard, uncomfortable, or slow. People with painful past experiences can feel whole without re-traumatizing themselves in the process. Changing your relationship with others begins with changing your relationship with yourself. And everyone has inner wisdom. Just some need a little bit more help tapping into it. Well said. Thanks. Well, for those of you that don't have belief statements... What would it look like to create a document or a manifesto like Judy called it um, or just a statement? And it doesn't ever have to be shared with anyone else. Um, you know, belief statements aren't something I go around stamping on social media. But if you go deep enough. You could, you could find them on my about page on my website. And I'm sure, you know, you could find others that have those, but it's really to ground yourself in those perceptions and that future vision that you have for your coaching practice. Welcome, Michael. Nice to have you. And we're talking about belief statements uh, or a manifesto or a mission statement for your coaching practice. Uh, Charlotte, go ahead. Are there prompts or questions that you could suggest to get us started kind of thinking through what that should look like or could look like? I've never really thought about that. Um, I, I would just say journaling will help you on a regular basis you know, and once you're in the online space long enough, you start to see things that you stand, I stand against that. I, that's not right, or that's wrong, or that's how it should be. And just start keeping mental notes of those things that you notice 
Um, hi, Gordon. Change your name there so everybody doesn't think you're Suzanne. Um, <laughs> uh, Gordon has this way with emotional intelligence. So I know that his belief about his coaching practice is in alignment with my beliefs because of the things he says about his coaching practice. And you'll start to see, oh, oh yeah, that's how it should be. Or, oh, I don't like that sales tactic. Or I don't like the way that person. And it starts to help you form that way of standing for and against things. And standing against things, um, taking a stand against something can be almost as powerful as taking a stand for something. Thank you. But now you're going to make me create some prompts for a belief statement. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. No, you can do that. You can do that. Read something of Louise Hayes and that'll inspire you to create I am statements for sure. For sure. All right. And if anybody knows of a good brand of really strong double-sided tape i bought these really cute drawers for underneath my desk that like stick under my desk and they keep dropping down into my lap all the time so <laughs> when, if you heard that crash that was my drawer full of pen that's now all over the floor uh -huh. um so i think by doing this you know you can use that passion to stay in alignment with your coaching practice. Like David shared, um, you know, gratitude is, is his coaching practice, right? He's the gratitude guy. His talk is about gratitude. Well, if he wasn't a grateful person, when you meet him or you talk to him, it's not going to fly. It's not going to, gel together it has to be part of who you are and i think that comes off energy wise what do you what do you think if it's part of the fiber of your being then it translates really well and and a, a background concept to that is if it doesn't translate as a part of your being there's resistance to, you know there's a subconscious resistance to it right you you got to have that alignment of what you consciously are thinking in the subconscious part of it yeah. or it comes off with a, a distortion yeah well how many times or how many of you have tried to sell something market something or you know offer something that you were like i'm just kind of doing this for the money how many of you have done that before? Mm -hmm. I have. And guess what? Didn't sell a single thing. Didn't sell a single thing. 850 people in my Facebook group. And I created something just to make money and nothing. Huh. Wrong energy. Even though I didn't say it, it had the wrong energy behind it. And Mike shared a very funny joke, but only to me. Mike, will you please say that out loud? Suzanne was complaining about her drawer falling into her lap. My comment was, I have the same problem too. My drawers keep falling down. I need a better belt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dad joke. Totally. But, you know, it goes with your sense of humor for sure. David Visco, anything to share about this? Standing for, standing against? Good stuff. I've been spending this whole time trying to look at when I did all this. Because didn't we do this uh, in a workshop about two months ago? We yeah. worked on this? Yeah. yeah. And I'm very, I'm upset with myself that I can't find it. So that, um, but, you know, what I'm, what I stand for is self-accountability. And, um it's interesting because when I coach my clients, I find many of them, uh, they need that 
they need me to hold them accountable. And even then, like David was saying, it gets really difficult because not everybody does what they're supposed to do. And they're like little children sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, accountability is something I really stand for. I just have to figure out how to put it in a statement. And I know my clients certainly feel that way because I hold them accountable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think accountability is if you, well, you have this piece about you too, if I may, that's about sure. self-awareness. That's about being able to look at yourself as a business owner and then have a coach who helps you improve that. Um, what does that look like to really be strong in that regard? You know, um, encouraging somebody to be self accountable. It's one of the hardest things to do. Yep. You're trying to teach willpower. It's impossible, right? You either have it or you don't, or you want to get it or you don't. Spot on. Break the challenge. Gordon, anything to say about belief statements? Um, it's something that we need to have without, it's kind of the fuel that drives underneath. I talk a lot about our worth and our value, but if my belief in myself is that I'm less than somehow, mm. then I don't show up even for myself the way I should be. And the mindset that's created out of that is skewed, right? Because I'm trying to, I'm making decisions out of lack and negative instead of out of love and positive and abundance. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, anything to share? Oh, you're on mute. One thing popped into my mind. I think it was David that was saying, um, you know, accountability king. Mm -hmm. Or uh, do you do a do you do something that you might call an an accountability audit, like a like a quiz? Because yeah. it could be interesting. Um, you know, I could I could find myself interested. How accountable are you really? Maybe it's something I pride myself on and being accountable. And maybe I might find out in a quiz, oh, maybe I'm not as accountable as I thought. Maybe I'm not as reliable or consistent as I usually want to think of myself. Those are just a few ideas that popped into my head. But as far as belief systems are concerned, um, I think the first thing that come to my, comes to my mind is when it comes to my clients, they're always doing that the best that they can in any given moment. And so being kind to them, because occasionally, it, it doesn't happen very often, but um, I, ha I can get a little impatient. Mm. And so kindness actually goes a long way, recognizing that there was a time when I was pretty clueless about self-improvement and self-discovery and personal transformation. So if I'm helping somebody who's just at the start of that journey, uh, a little kindness um, helps them want to stay with me. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if uh, for all of you that know uh, Dr. Dorothy, she says, <clears throat> I'll hold your heart while I kick your ass. <laughs> so it's, it's, That's that, a good one. it's that combination of, you know, compassionate, caring and encouragement with shit or get off the pot as my mother used to say right um i'm going to share a couple of my belief statements in the chat and this might help you because <clears throat> my first one is for my clients what i want to do with them the second one is a, a belief i have in general about business owners entrepreneurs the third one is something I believe about myself, which that really needs to be a part of your transformation in your clients. Because if you have beliefs about yourself, I can do this, or I believe this about myself, that makes me a more confident coach, a more confident marketer, a more confident salesperson. 
And the last one is the one I shared about believing that coaching is custom and co-created uh, with actionable steps, resources, simple, straightforward motivation and momentum, which to me, that's the definition of accountability, motivation plus momentum to reach your goals. But you can see how having beliefs about myself enables bolder decisions when you are confident in yourself and the choices that you're making, you can make those bolder decisions. They're, they're still just as difficult, but you're more able to do them uh, in front of other people. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, my next question for you is what is required of you to install or delete to be that coach that you desire to be, whether it's um, going from charging $1,000 a month to $5,000 a month, whether it's going from charging $10 a month to $200 a month. What do you need to install for yourself? Might be a habit of eating, moving, sleeping, meditating, journaling, um, speaking, or it might be something you need to delete working too much, sitting too much, scrolling too much, shiny object syndrome too much, or trying to do too much. And so every month, looking at what needs work, what do I need to install here? What do I need to delete from that routine? And saying no can be the most powerful thing for your calendar. So let's think about that for a minute. What would and you all know what it is, what would be that number one thing that you could quit doing, delete from your calendar, delete from your routine? Could be alcohol, could be Oreo cookies, could be sitting too much. Maybe maybe you're watching TV or scrolling on your phone till 11 o'clock at night. What's that number one thing for you that if you got rid of, your coaching practice would improve? Sitting too much. Agreed. Agreed. If you don't have a standing desk, Judy, send an alarm on your phone for every hour to get up and walk around your house. Make yeah, 10,000 steps a day and non-negotiable. Was that you, Jason, or you, Michael? That was me, actually. Oh, Talon. Yeah, I, uh, I, I have the same issue. I, I, I sit in my desk all day long, it seems like. And I need to get out of the house more, too. Uh, like, I'm so focused on what I'm doing right now because I love it. Um, and I'm just uh, from more, the time I get up till the time I go to bed, which is extremely late most of the time. I'm usually right here and I get up to go eat and go to the bathroom. And it's like most of the, that's most of the day, every day. It's just it's pretty much what I do. So, okay. Any any hip problems, back problems, neck problems? Yeah, it's getting there. So I, I actually did get up this morning. I got up and started doing. Um, I, I've told myself for weeks that I was going to do this, so I actually did it this morning. I got up and uh, did some yoga. I did some uh, like beginning yoga. I think it helped for real. Like I felt more limber today. So. Number one test of an aging body. Are you ready? And I, if you if you can't do it, you're going to be very upset with yourself. Sit down to the on the floor without assistance. Just go from standing to sitting on the floor without putting your hands down, hmm. and then stand up without your hands. And if you can't do that, it's it's a measure of how flexible and how strong the major muscles are in your body, your glutes and your quads. If you need a chair to push against to get up off the ground, hmm, you're definitely sitting too much.
Can you touch your toes? If not. If I'm in the fetal position. <laughs> <laughs> Which I would be after I got on the floor and couldn't get back up. Uh, I heard a comedian today uh, say, touch my toes. I can if you cut them off and hand them to me. So, but it's something to work on, right? Those personal flexibility, um, whether it's hip mobility or, I mean, just just sitting in your desk chair. This is the first time I've sat down today. Um, but if I was sitting longer, you know, just doing some leg exercises while I'm sitting here or, you know, squeezing your butt together, like something to get you out of that habit. So I'm going to challenge you on that one, Judy and Talon, to move a little bit more and set that step limit at a limit, you know, a, a ceiling or what, a, not a ceiling, a, a baseline every day. You, you got to hit 10,000 steps every day. And there's a number, uh, 5,400 something steps is the measure if you're below 5,400 and something steps per day, you're more likely to have disease, depression, and anxiety than somebody who walks more than that. Mm -hmm. Check those steps. Anybody else have uh, something that needs to go that they want to share, be held accountable for? Something you know that would move your coaching practice forward. Honor my time blocks. Mm. Yes. <laughs> God, am I bad at that? I don't know. Do I need somebody to hold me. What are you putting them there for if you're not going to honor them? Exactly. What yeah. the hell? I'm really good at developing a plan, being very strategic and all that. And then something comes up and, oh, I can't get to my content marketing time block today. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. So, oh, but you honor blocks with other people, correct? Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I know all the things. I know. Keep going. Tell me more. I need to get this <laughs> nailed. <laughs> well, treating treating an appointment with yourself the same way you treat it with another person, that's that's the first step. That's the key. That's, that's valuing yourself at that same level. You know, exercise time, my workout and walk time. I remember when I added that block to my calendar a couple of years ago, 7 a.m. to 9 or 10, depending on the day. And that's my time. So no clients go in there before that. And I remember the days I made it three days a week till 10 instead of nine. And I was like, am I going to be able to do that? And now I love the fact that I don't get to my desk till 10, three days a week. So what does that look like for you to honor, to honor that? Yeah, that's gold. Yeah. Okay. My next question, unless anybody has something else to say about install and delete. Okay. What is the voice or the bias in your head that's running behind the scenes all the time. So if you don't know what that means, there's typically a statement in your head or a feeling that is kind of dormantly running behind the scenes all the time. And when you're challenged or stressed or overwhelmed, this statement will come up on repeat. Um, when I was living with constant headaches from my neck years ago, the, the statement was constantly, but my head hurts, but my head hurts, but my head hurts. It was the filter through which I had to do everything, but I have a headache. How am I going to do this? But I have a headache. How am I going to do this? And when that 
underlying current was gone, I felt like I needed to fill it with something else. And that's when I created the belief statements to run through my head instead. But typically, as humans, we have our own inadequacies running through our heads at any given time. I'm fat, I'm old, I'm ugly, I shouldn't be doing this. Who am I to do a live video? You know, I'm sure you've heard some or all of those. And what is that underlying statement for you? What's that, what's that little chatter for you? And I know you don't have to share, but I know you all have one. And what would it be like if that didn't happen anymore? What if you got rid of that? Whatever it is. I'm fat, I'm old, I'm ugly, I'm not good enough. I'm not, who am I to charge, you know, for my 35 years experience? Whatever it is, write them down and be willing to let them go. How do you do that? How do you let those feelings go? I have my thoughts. I'm wondering if you have any thoughts of what has helped you in the past. I talked to Judy Kane. Yes. Talk to Judy. She'll help you with that. Definitely starts with just identifying that, right? To even even have the context, right? To go to catch yourself in that moment and have that filter going so that, okay, over the next week, when anything pops into my head, I'm going to question, I'm going to say, okay, where's that coming from? What is that? Why? Where does they, because they are just habits sometimes, you know, that that's the instant reaction to things. And they go like, wait a second. <laughs> and and I, I think Tony Robbins has a good one. It's like, okay, even if you believe that's true, just to question it, you know, okay, what if it weren't true? What if, you, you know, what would that look like? You know, and just start to yeah. tear it apart that way. And good starting place, I guess. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Byron, Byron Katie calls it the work. Um, And the work is, is it true? Is it really true? Is it really, really true? And what proof do I have? And that can help unless you're sabotaging in, you know, a, a bigger way. Any other thoughts on that? I'm happy to share one. There's two people on this call who say, Mike, I know you're new to coaching, but you have a lot to offer. What you're proposed charging should be doubled. And I'm wrestling with that. Mm. I had lunch with a long-term mentor of mine who happens to be a CPA. He's a tightwad. I floated that thinking I'd get affirmation from him. Mike, your prices are just fine. He agreed with the two people on this call that I should raise my rates. Hmm. Now I need to believe it and do it. Wow. Thank you to him, whoever his name is. But um, how did that feel to hear it from him outside? He's because he's outside of the industry, too. So that helps a little bit. But given that he's a, a trusted advisor to uh, major decision makers and that my rate would be higher than his rate, mm -hmm. but he said, nonetheless, um, mm -hmm. so um, it, it it's good to hear it just because it's, it's just further validation. So thank you both. Yeah. Well, now hearing it from others is step one. Hearing it from yourself, how many times a day uh, till it becomes a habit? 
till it becomes, you know, commonplace in your, in your thinking. Uh, I had a one-on-one -on -one schedule right after lunch with someone I recently met. We were discussing, you know, how could we be supportive of each other? And he just asked the question, Mike, can you give me a, walk me through your rate structure? Mm -hmm. I quoted him the new structure. Huge win for today. Yes. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with us. Bet. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, I'm curious, Mike, um, what's your plan? You hinted that you've got one uh, with a new new pricing structure, but what's your plan? When you ask plan, what are you asking for specifically? Well, like the next time you are with a, you know, a prospect that you haven't sold yet, and you're getting down to the point where uh, they're going to ask you what it's what it's going to cost. What's your plan for how you're going to do it different than you used to? I guess the main thing I would do is I would stick to the plan uh, and not not capitulate. But in terms of kind of where I am. Um, the, the plan is, is to, to be able to speak with confidence that it's worth every penny. Yeah. Have you got a plan for if they say it's too much? Uh, the short answer is I'm, I'm desirous of folks that if they say it's too much, if I have a, and, and I do have a three tier plan, so I can back off the higher, but I don't want to start with that. I want to start with the higher. And if they say yes, then I'm off to the races. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that's answering your question or not. I'm trying to, did I speak to no, it, your it, you? You, you answered my question. I think, uh, I, since August, I have been on the same road since since August in terms of raising my rates. And I've had all kinds of people tell me to do it. And I've had uh, a couple of times where I was still a little low and I thought I left some money on the table. And there were a couple of times, one that's memorable, where um, they told me later they, they really couldn't afford me, that I was out of their ballpark. And... Uh, what that actually enabled me to do is to have a conversation with them where I total I totally told them up front, listen, I am I'm acting on coaching myself. And um, so when I said what it costs, um, I you were part of my experiment. <laughs> and they appreciated the honesty, the bone honesty. And uh, so I I was quoting something. Uh, is it okay if I put numbers out there just for the sake of? Whatever you're comfortable uh, with. Okay. So uh, I said to him, it'll cost you uh, $4,000 for this block of coaching. So later they told me that they couldn't afford that. And then I said, I was honest with them that this is a brand new experience for me, changing my rates. Because up until three months ago, four months ago, I was charging $1,000. And I still, if somebody can't afford me, truth, truly, I'll still go with a thousand because I never, ever want somebody to not, who really wants my services to not be able to get them because of money. And so interestingly, this one fellow said, well, uh, I also don't think you should go too low because I don't want to pay you a thousand dollars. I'm thinking about, I'll do 3000. Mm. Now, where have you been in a, in a, negotiation like that but for me it was it was all about i'm not going to make up any bullshit mm -hmm. you know about how, how i'm worthwhile i'm worth that i'm worth or i'm not worth that um my point is i know they need work how can we work it out so that they get this work that they really want and so to me that takes i'm willing to talk about it and not give anybody, make up any bullshit about uh, those are my rates and that's what I'm worth. I like that. And I, I heard 
and I can't remember who it was who said um, when someone said that it was expensive or that's a lot, the, the coach's response was, it depends. Well, one of the responses that everybody says is, that's the time to be quiet mm. still and let them come with the next. If they say that's a lot and you interject, you might be 30 seconds away from them saying that's a lot. And then they go, okay, mm -hmm. you don't want to short circuit that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Gordon. Um, I think sometimes we get caught and I'm preaching as much to myself as to anybody else. Um, what are they actually paying for? Because I think as coaches, we get stuck going, well, they're paying for my time or they're paying for what I know, or they're paying for my experience, or they're paying me back for all the money I've spent to get the information. And what they're paying for has nothing to do with us, literally nothing to do with you, nothing. And so, you know, do you know that what you, what you share, if they implement it and execute it, which a lot of times becomes part of the challenge because they don't do the execution portion of it. But do you know that if you share what you share, that it can absolutely change somebody's life? Mm -hmm. Because what they're paying for is the transformation. They're paying for the result, what it will do for them. It has nothing to do with it. They don't, I had somebody today go, I don't, they want to know what my resume was. And I'm like, it doesn't matter what my resume is. It really doesn't. My resume and a buck and a half will buy me a coffee. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. I know people that have amazing resumes that suck as coaches. Right. They can't, they can't make it lots of designation they've got lots of experience oh, gordon you froze you got lots of lots of things but what oh, the back. client sorry they're trying the transformation themselves the other thing that you might try to what michael was saying as far as um i think there's a perceived value in there right so if you buy um, a rolex Will it tell the time the same as like you spend thirty five hundred dollars for a Rolex? A twenty dollar Timex will tell you the time exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. But if you walk in and try and buy a Rolex, they never have a sale on a luxury product. Mercedes, Lexus, they never have a sale. Why? Because they don't want to deplete the value, the perceived value of the product. So what I did when I had pro athletes was to ask them, I don't want to discount what my hourly rate is. I don't want to discount my, my, my pricing structure, but I also have a heart for people that want to change and don't have the money. Mm -hmm. And so I asked my pro athletes for some money towards my scholarship fund. Exactly what I did. And every single one of them said, yes, I never had anybody say no. The highest guy that was paying me paid 130 grand for six months with me and gave me another 20 grand for my scholarship fund. And when they asked me, how much do you want? I said, I'm not going to give you a number. You just tell you just give me whatever you want, because it was all positive for me. Right? Um, but it, it shocked me because and then when I wrote my even on the invoice and at the time I was charging hourly at two grand an hour. But I would write the invoice and say one hour with Gord, two grand. Contribution from client, whatever they could afford. So to Michael's piece about the thousand, but I don't want to pay you a thousand. I want to write, what, what do you want to pay? I, I can pay 1500 bucks. Great. So 1500 is the contribution from the client. Scholarship contribution was $500. So. Mm. When. They told somebody else, what did you pay? When people. That Canadian internet. Brag to their friends about, tell you, they tell their, sorry, they tell their friends what their MSRP, manufactured retail was on the, I bought a 20 or a $70,000 truck. Mm -hmm. 
but they want to pay 40 grand for that truck. And I just want to add that the, the opposite right. is true. So it be making sure that it, lawyers, absolutely true. Absolutely true. Lawyers pay, you have big, but they do pro bono work, mm -hmm. right? It's how you, how you frame it for the client, but yes. at least for me. Well, it's totally different by, you know, giving somebody something for free versus giving them a scholarship to working with you. And they know that someone else has funded that, that way with you. That's a whole different feeling because that means somebody else is basically paying for you. You know, it's a different mentality. It's a different feeling. Um, one of my coaches gave this analogy. Um, he had, he took off his watch and he said, you know, here's this, here's this Rolex. It's worth $20,000 and I'm going to sell it to you today for 500. And he's put it in front of the camera, 500 bucks, 500 bucks. Who's going to take it? Nobody took it. Why? Because if it's a $20,000 Rolex and you're selling it for $500, it's fake or there's something wrong or it's broken or it's stolen or whatever. And <laughs> by charging too little, you can leave the perception of it's not worth it. I don't have to show up. Uh, oh, it's only a hundred bucks a month. I, you know, I don't need to be there. So there's kind of like maybe being the most expensive, like Steve Hardison is cool, right? But being the cheapest definitely should not be on your radar. Okay, so how do we do this? How do we embrace who we need to be as humans so that we can be the best coach that we can possibly be, charge great rates for our families, for our business bottom line, and also make the biggest difference for our clients. I have my ideas, and this is where I'm going with my coaching practice being the best version of myself has to be the number one thing on my calendar blocks that looks like getting back to the fundamentals of eating moving sleeping breathing meditating celebrating and having that be number one on the schedule before anything else. What does that look like for you? And yes, Tom, I, I have myself a $250 Rolex I bought off a vendor in New York. Pretty looks pretty real too. Um, what do those fundamentals look like for you and how can you make them non-negotiables? Uh, David and I talk, often on a on a walk about exercise and food and holding each other accountable to some of those things and if you have the basics in place that's what we talked about last week the basics what's what's the baseline of the eating the moving the sleeping and making it a non-negotiable with yourself sue doesn't drink diet coke anymore Sue goes to bed by 10 o'clock and turns off electronics at least two hours before bed. And, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a little tight tonight. <laughs> but what does that look like for you? And how often are you breaking those because of some ridiculous thing that comes up or a shiny object or whatever? And 
one of the things that really stood out when I was looking at this for myself and why I wanted to talk about it was there was something missing in what I was doing for the past two years. And I couldn't really put my finger finger on it. Like what, what's missing? There was, there was a lack of that fulfillment. I wasn't, didn't feel like I was making a big enough difference. And so that had to get incorporated into where I'm going and what I'm doing. I need to feel like it is more impactful. What does that look like for you? If you slept eight or nine hours a night and walked 10,000 to 15,000 steps a day and removed alcohol and processed food, where would you be in three months? Mental clarity wise, physically energized, probably. Right, so you're yeah. asking for people to share? If you want to. I, I take it. Uh, okay. Unless you want to just be deer in the headlights and be like, oh, shit, she's going to call on me and make me give up alcohol for the next three months. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> the, yeah. So the thing that you said, you discovered something was missing. Mm -hmm. The thought occurred to me. Yeah, there might be something missing. I wonder what that missing might be. But mm -hmm. what I can tell you that I'm doing right now is I have a, I have, this is three days this past week. Nice. So I have like, uh, food is on there. And what I'm doing each day, I have little circles to check off five different things each day, mm -hmm. and including exercise. And it's not perfect. I'm not perfect with it. Uh, I'm I would like to be better. So if somebody told me there might be something missing there, I would think, okay, um, I'm willing to look into that. I'm willing to like engage with that. There might be something a little missing that I could do better with it mm -hmm. than what I'm doing right now. But I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm doing this much. I am happy with that. And this is uh, the beginnings of today. Nice. Nice. Well, there is there is no perfect humans, right? So let's just get that out of the way. You're not going to okay. be the first, Michael. So, uh, right. but we can strive to be the best version of ourselves and close that gap between where we want to go and who we're showing up and being, um, and. That could be just a small little improvement every day. And it could yeah. be keeping track of it and starting to notice the patterns. Yeah. David, you want to share anything about what we talked about this week about, um, food and steps and all that good stuff well i think you you said it well the big thing to me and you hear this word i was talking about alignable early or alignment earlier but uh accountability uh, i have a coaching client tomorrow that i know he's going to tell me at 2 30 he did the homework at two o'clock so and it's once a month you know so it's like just just so it gets done and so i find with yours and my conversations um plus you use a word speaking of powerful words that I love is I challenge you and then just fill in the blank and whatever it is, Michael. Well, God, I got to accept the challenge after all. She's STK for God's sakes. I can't just blow that off. So, but there's something about knowing. And of course we typically talk on Sundays and I'm always kind of committed to the walk, but uh, another big thing about it is just a sort of a byproduct of it all is that it's two hours and, it, and about seven or eight miles and it feels like 30 minutes. So there's this thing when you're really cranking it out with your brain and stuff, that accountability makes the time go so much faster. And there's sometimes I'll walk by myself and just want to think about stuff or listen to a podcast. But every time that two hours goes by, it literally feels like 
20 or 30 minutes. Oh my God, it's already been what time. So I just think that we're, we're, we're creatures of habit. We're also, we're based on community and there's a lot of people that can make it all by themselves. But when you have a partner and an accountability partner, God, it just makes everything so much better because you're going to ask about them. They're going to ask about you and it makes you feel good when they congratulate you on doing what you've done. And so that's something that's been really powerful for you and me, SDK, that's been very, very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like um, entrepreneurship is the emotional journey of a lifetime. And that's that's what it's about, is mastering the personal habits. That's why it's a good personal development journey, right, to own your own business. And... I wrote this down earlier today. Um, I'm working on some things and I always write, write out thoughts, write out things that come to me. And I wrote entrepreneurship can test you in ways nothing else does. And up leveling your mindset, your tools, your thinking, your strategies, and your personal habits is the key to building something bigger, bolder, with more impact and more fulfillment. So that's where I'll, I'll leave you today with that thought. Any other final thoughts for today? Because we're at 8.02. I don't like to keep you too late. Thank you, SDK. Thank you. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. <laughs> That was a little song from kindergarten, right? Stand up. Stand up. Any other thoughts? What we talked about tonight? Any Anybody want to commit to anything? Don't say it in front of me unless you mean it. Because I will text you tomorrow. <laughs> well, I, I, believe, I will be better because of what we talked about here today. Awesome. Michael, how did you find out about tonight? How'd you get on my list? Um, it was probably over a month ago, mm -hmm. maybe a month and a half ago. I think it might've been, I don't know how, you, how, how long you've been doing this, but uh, I had it in my calendar now. every every Wednesday uh -huh. and just never got to it until this time. Awesome. Mm. Well, happy to have you in my world, my new friend. Mm. Welcome. Nice group here great to have you thanks for your input gordon anything to say final thoughts you know how i love final thoughts i know you do um i like the uh and i i hold gratitude for people that are willing to hold your heart as the cake your ass when you need that to happen that love you enough not to leave you where you are yeah and, and entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Um, it it takes a it takes some persistence and resilience and consistency and so many things that most people don't have or don't want to have. They could and they just choose not to. Yeah. So yeah. Good people around you. Good communities like this with. A little bit of grit goes a long way. I want to know what Charlotte has to say, because first of all, she said nothing. And number two is she's one name like Elvis or Cher. There's no, no, no last name is needed. So. <laughs> well, I've been on two other calls with STK today, so I figured she was tired <laughs> of listening to me talk. So that's why I stay a little uh, make, makes David, perfect I will sense. have to let you know, I've never, David, I've never picked a word of the year before. Like I have friends that have picked words or phrases or something like that. And last week uh, I sat down, was working on something in the morning and gratitude just oh, jumped wow. out as that is going to be my word this year. Um, and I've never chosen one before, but that, um, and then when you popped up on the call, mm. I was like, oh yeah, he's the gratitude guy. <laughs> um, and no, I'll, I'll, if, if Suzanne did ask something, I took one of your questions a little differently when you were talking about the self-talk you know, what's the message that we tell ourselves? Mine wasn't so much a, like a critical or judging thing. I have a really bad habit of saying, 
I can work on that tomorrow. You know, I'll look and see that I only have a 30 minute window before it's time for me to do something else. And um, I'll go, oh, I'll have time to work on that tomorrow. And I really need to start adding some urgency to use those blocks of 30 minutes or 45 minutes when it doesn't seem like I could get a lot done, but I probably could if I really focused. Mm. You know so. what's super helpful? Tell me. Um, David Allen, who wrote the book, Getting Things Done, uh -huh. Um, and he's, he's a big fan of paper lists. You know, I have my website improvement list. I have my, you know, funnel improvement list, whatever. Yes. I have lots of lists. He recommends a list of five minute tasks. Hmm. You know, maybe you right. have to just do research for a trademark and uh -huh. it's only going to take five minutes. And you, you have this go-to list of those five send a birthday card to Mary it's on yeah. my five minute list and whenever those little blocks of time come up you can do a couple of those five minute tasks that's it's a great idea life-changing I had somebody not show up for a discovery call today yeah. which, you know 30 minute call so I couldn't tackle any of my big projects in 30 minutes that'd just be right. irritating but I could look right at my five minute list and I reached out to 10 people from my list just with a little LinkedIn voice message. That's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Gordon. On that same type of topic, I used to do something with my pro athletes where I would get them to make they had their list of things they had to get done today but they would make a B list and a C list and a D list, right? So because that, for that very reason, we have a half an hour and I go, what do I do with the half an hour? I'm not sure what to do with the half an hour. I'll, I'll go to the bathroom, I'll make myself a sandwich. And the next thing you know, the half an hour is gone. So instead of that happening, you'd have a B list of things that had to get done this week, but didn't have to happen today. And a C list of things that had to get done this month, but not necessarily this week. And you'd put a time next to them how long they were going to take. And so somebody misses their half an hour appointment, one hour appointment. You look up and go, okay, what's in my thing that I can fit into? So you're not moving. You're just boom, boom, boom. And it, it picked up a whole whack of stuff really quick. Love it. Love it. Talon. I will say that with, uh, with the AI tools today, what can get done in 30 minutes is actually pretty incredible. So we can get a whole lot done in 30 minutes, way more than we used to be able to, if you've got the right tools in your toolbox. Oh yeah. Charlotte, go to your thread that I helped you program. Yeah. Ask it for some belief statements about wow. your coaching business. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. Okay. Yeah, Charlotte, why is SDK the one telling you that? No, I'm taking Talon's um, AI class right now too. Awesome. As far as marketing, some some marketing stuff. And I have an assignment due tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> Better get to it. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for um, entertaining this topic tonight. And thank you for participating. Thank you for being here. Um, Coach Conversations is over two years old now and it's not changing anytime soon. Um, it will be here every month, third Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, Jeff Sarah is my speaker for uh, next month. We're going to talk about some relaxation techniques and some breathing techniques for when you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, how to get back to center. And this tonight kind of gives you a little peek into what you've been, what you haven't tapped into with me um, my, my focus on the fundamentals of eating, moving, sleeping, and all of those personal habits is really going to come back into focus. And I'm really excited about where, where that's going to go and the use of positive psychology in coaching and those mindset pieces that make me gritty and resilient and bold and fearless, uh, I feel needs to come out and be shared more. So uh, thank you for entertaining that with me tonight. And I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you again. Good night.
And thanks, thanks to newcomer Michael for being here and being brave. And we'll connect soon. Take care, everybody. You too. Good to see you.